Hey, this is Pastor Curry, pastor of the Ease Out Your Fear Baptist Church, Wilmington's most exciting church, the church that love you and ain't a thing you can do about it. I'm super excited today. Many of you say, Pastor Curry, you're always excited. Yes, I'm excited because we're bridging the gap. We're going to bridge the gap between the, 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 the current with the future. And today we have a representative, uh, Sister um, uh, Melody, who is the operations director for the teen warehouse here in Wilmington over in the Riverside section of the city. And she's going to share what they are doing over there. They're doing some amazing stuff. So I want you to call somebody, tell them Coffee with Curry is on. We got an amazing show where we're going to show how the youth is doing some great and tremendous things in the city of Wilmington. And we'll be right back. wanted to create a safe space where the teens in our city of Wilmington can come to get all of the support and wraparound services that they need. Our tagline at the warehouse is for teens by teens and that rings true in everything we do. Our board chair is a 17 year old rising senior at Mount Pleasant, Anaya Patterson. So teens have been, been with us at every step of the way. We operate around five basic pillars, recreation, education, arts, career and health. You can hit all five pillars on um, being a teen here, and that's what's most important is that well-rounded individual that's ready to take on the world when they graduate high school. What we wanted to do was position ourselves, position our community where we're leading in front, um, where we're stepping out and giving our youth an opportunity to be heard, to feel empowered. So that's what we're doing with this facility. That's what we're doing with the Reach Riverside revitalization effort. We put the community first. We put the community's needs first and we listen. We put $3 million in renovations into this building uh, because we understand that, you know, particularly like neighborhoods that are on the outskirts, low income, uh, majority black, these neighborhoods have been disinvested in for, you know, decades and decades. And we talk about, you know, really focusing on the next workforce. Our youth are the next workforce, so why wouldn't we invest in them? So, you know, every dollar that we put in here, we see that we're going to get that back tenfold as we invest into our youth. My son LJ goes to great schools and has access to great programming and things like that, but it shouldn't be a determination of, you know, how successful he is based upon where he lives or what kind of job his parents have. We should all be afforded that American dream and I won't stop until you know I make that happen. And we're back. It is a joy and a privilege for us to have the current director for the teen warehouse here in Wilmington, Delaware, they're doing some amazing things. And as I did the research and, 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 and studied what they were doing, I was just floored with what they are able to do and will be able to do once this COVID season is over. So today joining me is Ms. Medley Phillips, who is uh, the director. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank well, you. It is a joy and a privilege. And, and while we were talking, you just shared so many wonderful things. You are a, a, a native of Southbridge. Yes, yes. And, Southbridge and, is home. And, and, yeah, and, and that's just awesome. But I also love the fact that you're a member of the greatest sorority in the world. Yes, I am. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> all right, you can tell. And you are a Neil, a Neil fight, right? Yes, I am. It's, 2018. It's all in the atmosphere. <laughs> yes. It's a joy having you with us. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the Team Warehouse. Yes, so I love working at the warehouse. I'm the director of operations there, and it is um, just like a phenomenal opportunity. So we have a thing called For Teens by Teens. Everything we do is in true collaboration with our teens. So from the architectural design to the um, interior, the teens design that. They work with the architect from the beginning in 2018 to figure out how they would turn the former Prestige Academy into this innovative teen center. And then when we had our commercial interior design 
designer came in, the teens picked out everything from the cabinets to the colors. Uh, so when you actually walk into the building, you will see that it is truly teen centric. Wow. Yes. Wow. Well, I think that's just awesome. <laughs> um, and you know, when, when, when I look at some of your pillars about yes. empowering them, yes. th you're really doing that. You're really doing that. How are you all do faring out with COVID right now? So COVID has definitely been, um, I kind of, I will say COVID's been bittersweet for the warehouse. Okay. Of course, bitter because COVID hit three weeks before the warehouse was supposed to have its grand opening. So we were slated to have our grand opening the week of spring break in 2020. The building was under renovations all of 2019. And then three weeks before COVID hit, so we had to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So we created this program called The Wave, the Warehouse Advanced okay. Virtual Experience. And we took all of our pillars, recreation, education, arts, career, and health, and turned that into um, our virtual platform. So we had plenty of program partners who offered virtual programming um, during that time. Bittersweet because being in a new facility, new staff, it allowed us to create all of our policies and procedures without having a whole bunch of teens in the building. Um, so it's so we were able to really kind of solidify what our policies and procedures create all our manuals and everything um, but of course it would have been nice if we could have had more teens in the building at the beginning um you know if COVID didn't happen <laughs> yeah well well but 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 even though COVID is, is happening the excitement yes is very much there yes and, and i was even told that the the chair of the board is the 17 year old? Yes, she is. Her name is Anaya Patterson. Um, she is the uh, co-chair of the warehouse board. Okay. Um, we have an, a, a teen co-chair co and adult. So our adult co-chair is um, Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker and oh, her okay. and um, Anaya serve as the board chair. So uh, um, Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker was just voted onto the board in December. So from May through December, Anaya ran the board meetings completely on her own. She created her agenda. Um, she had her Roberts Rules of Order. Uh, she she has a very awesome mentor, Jessica Gibson from um, Newcastle County um, is Anaya's mentor, so it worked out really well. And then Anaya also serves as the chair of the teen executive committee. Okay. So what happens with the warehouse is that every time a program partner wants to do something inside the warehouse, they have to pitch their concept or their idea to the teens. Oh, and so the teen executive committee is who here. So let's say Reverend Curry comes in and he wants to, you know, do a program. You meet with the teen executive committee, you give them your idea, and then they vote on whether or not that program is going to be in the warehouse. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it will keep them active. Yes. Because they're, when you all talk about giving them that empowerment to be able to, to take control of their environment, you're doing it. Yes, And that's yes. just awesome. Right there, do you have any, I, I, you know, we don't have the, the founder, but being the, the one of the operations, or being the operations director, do you, do you know why you all did it right there in Riverside? Yes, I do. So our CEO is Logan Herring, and um, Logan and I have a running joke that the warehouse is both our baby. So if we ever had to go to court, we would be in a custody battle <laughs> over the warehouse. So in any event, um, he had this brainchild around the warehouse. But the reason it's done specifically in Riverside is because Riverside is one of the most blighted, unfortunately, disadvantaged neighborhoods um, throughout the city of Wilmington. It um, has been known as um, Little Iraq. Um, and we're trying to make sure we get away from that. So the warehouse is a part of a uh, three entity organization. So we're called the work group. Um, the warehouse, Reach Riverside, and Kingswood Community Center. Yeah. The ultimate goal is to revitalize the entire Riverside corridor. Yeah. Um, they actually just have already broke ground on the mixed income housing units that are going to be coming. So while the Reach Riverside umbrella of those three organizations is working with all of the families in the Riverside housing projects, along with uh, Wilmington Housing Authority, uh, Kingswood Community Center is serving younger children, 1 through 12, and then they have a senior center. We serve the teens, so that way there's no gap in service. Okay. So eventually in Riverside, it's a 10-year plan, you're going to see 600 units of mixed income housing. And then um, along with about 10% of that will be home ownership, in addition to having the warehouse in Kingswood Community Center truly serving the needs of the community. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm just sitting here in awe because... There are many people who uh, lip <laughs> service, yes. but you all are really putting to action things that are just awesome. And, and the, dis the, the mis misfortunate part is that we're in COVID right now. Yes. Uh, so the, the full effect of it cannot be seen or felt or experienced, but I'm sure that it's going to once we get out of this, uh, this, this, this dilemma we're in. Uh, COVID um, did some devastating things to many of mm. a part of the Af African-American community. 
And the purpose for the show today was really to share with the community and those who, who, who follow us mm -hmm. that we need to start bridging the gap. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that, that, that we talk about our history. Yes. But how do we make sure we have a history beyond now? And what you all are doing, I think, is that good bridge. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, now tell me, how do you keep your energy up <laughs> to the level that you keep it? I work with teens all day, Dr. Curry, so that I have to be energized. Um, it's So everybody always knows Melody as the super bubbly personality, um, and I was not like that as a teenager, oh. ironically enough. Um, I have, um, I'm a South Ridge, you know, grew up here in South Ridge, so love South Ridge's home. Um, my teens always um, tease me. They say that um, when they get to having fun and everything, I'll, I'll be like, oh, it's my turn. It's a 16-year-old girl that still lives in me, and she's from South Ridge, and she wants to come out and play and party and everything and hang with the teens. So the reason I was not like that, um, my grandmother raised me and my mother was on drugs. So for 20 years, I didn't see my mother. Um, she, um, you know, due to the crack epidemic, um, she was addicted and she was on drugs. And because the, um, the system taught the, treated the crack epidemic and more criminal justice yeah. than social services. So my, my, my uh, mother ended up doing 15 years in prison. Um, so we really had to build a relationship from prison, which means as a teenager, I was very angry at her. I was very disappointed. I was very hurt. And I had a really good mentor who is also a Delta. Mm. And she was my sixth grade teacher. Her name is Dr. Terry Joyner. And she's the reason why I decided to really start working with youth. I lived in South Bridge and had no idea that Hokusson was still in Delaware. So when she took me to her house and took me to plays that's what made me really see a different side so I started coming out of my shell becoming this bubbly personality now take all that work with teens and what you had mentioned earlier in regard to COVID it's 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 interesting because COVID has done a lot of challenging things to the African-American community our warehouse teens, though, we have seen a significant increase in membership since the um, COVID hit. We actually have 365 teen members right now, even though not all of them can actively come into the warehouse. So it is definitely a need in the community for the services. Yeah, I, I, we're going to take a break, but I, I really was I'm really impressed with you sharing your personal testimony because this is why you are excited yes because you know the power of mentorship yes. you know the power of being able to be empowered so we're going to take a commercial break and we'll be okay. right back we'll be right back Because of my mentors? Because you mentored me? I realized my dreams. Because someone cared enough to mentor me? Cared enough. I'm able to offer spiritual guidance. I never gave up. Never. With the help of my mentors? I'm able to design the world around me. You can be the difference. Because you mentored me. Because you mentored me. Look at me now. Now I'm saving lives. I'm the coach of the team. Because someone cared enough to mentor me? I'm able to capture a moment. I'm able to be creative. This is my life. My life. Because you mentored me? I broke the mold. Because someone cared enough. Cared enough. I'm able to mentor someone else. I never gave up. I never gave up. Because you mentored me? I become a mentor too. Become a mentor in real life. And we're back. It was, it, it was very refreshing to hear uh, Sister Phillips talk about uh, some of the crises or calamities that she may have experienced. And she didn't say it with any sourness. She said it with, look, this is where I, I was, but someone reached out and touched me in the right way. And now today she's the woman that she is. Tell me, where, how does that happen with your drive for the young people that you're dealing with now? Yes, um, it's so ironic you ask that because um, growing up until I met my mentor and when I got in sixth grade, I wanted to be an attorney. So I was like, I'm going to be an attorney and be a corporate lawyer. I'm going to make a whole bunch of money. Um, and then that's what I, I wasn't thinking about working with teens at all. Um, I wasn't going to travel. I wasn't going to have any kids or anything of my own. And then my mentor really touched me and she said, you have so much to give to other people. And I really want you to kind of start thinking about who you are and creating your purpose, like your why. And so I'm like, I'm 
12 years old like why why would I create that she was like I'm telling you like over the years that'll come and so eventually I started working with um, teens you know sometimes part-time at a residential treatment facility or um, you know in different and I, and I worked in an alternative school as well and when I started working with young people it just it was mm. it just grew it became my passion it my passion then turned into my purpose because I look at them and they'll say, you grew up in South Ridge, Miss Melody, and you have a master's degree. And I'm like, yes, and you can do this. And to see their faces light up knowing that I come from an area similar to theirs. And yes, the crack epidemic hit my family hard. And my mother was in prison and my grandmother's only other child, which was her son, my uncle died in prison. So when I shared that story with them and then I say, yep, but I went on and I had to like, you know, really kind of pull myself, but I had a, my grandmother was awesome, my mentor, my dad. So I still had some really impactful people in my life and some really great women who really kind of kept showing me along the way. A lot of those women were Delta women. And so <laughs> it just really made me want to work with teens. And so now um, I have an opportunity to show them that they have options, that they have choices. I was just working with one of our teens his name is Jameer Hargraves, and he is set on going to Howard University. He's been accepted, yeah. he, and that's where he's going. And um, But he carries a 4.23 uh, GPA. So I said, why don't I challenge him? I said, why don't you apply to a couple of Ivy League schools? I said, apply to Harvard and see what happens. I can't get into Harvard. Miss mm -hmm. Melody, there's no way. He applied. Okay. He had an interview. He's just waiting to hear back. When that young man called me after he had his interview with Harvard, he was on, like through the roof. He was on the moon. It was about 930 at night. Miss Melody, I know it's late. I know you're home with your family. But my interview with Harvard, like I interview with Harvard. And so to see that expression on their faces that, yes, like, yes, you couldn't be from a single parent household or you can have had some tragedies. But all of your negatives and positives, you can turn them into a pearl. Absolutely. Hey, that was, well, you doing better pitching than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it up to you. I'm going to raise my offering in a minute. Uh, and, and, you know, thank you for that <laughs> example, too. You have really shocked me in two areas today when I was not even prepared for the two comments. But that that last scenario was very good. Thank you. Because all too often, I am a strong HBCU person. You know, mm -hmm. I went to Lincoln University and a couple of those with some of the degrees I have. And um, I've always preached HBCU, HBCU. But there is a difference. When It's not that we want to send the worst to HBCUs, but... Right. but if you so choose to go to an Ivy League school, mm -hmm. we should give that opportunity. But all too often, we don't believe. We don't believe that we can go to an Ivy League. Right. And this young man, oh man, yes. I can't wait to hear the testimony. He already in. Right. He's got it. Yes. And then he can make the decision yep. on whether I'm going to Howard or, or I'm going to wherever. Yeah. Or, like Harvard. or Harvard. 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 Yep. So that'll be his decision. That's awesome. This is what african american history really is mm -hmm. we always had fractured families yes. but we always had a community that helped us to become whatever we Amen. needed to become that so this is, is this, what we're doing is we're recycling so i really think that this show is really going to really help some person yes. to see that you're not at the end right. you're just at the beginning and you just need to apply yourself yes you all have five pillars yes and i and i i love them i want you to help me by breaking those five down to me, Nettie. Yes. So our five pillars are recreation, education, arts, career, and health. Uh -huh. So within each of our five pillars, we have program partners who provide free programming at the warehouse or virtual um, within those pillars. So for a prime example, during the WAVE experience, we had um, body weight and training under recreation. We've had hip hop dance classes through our program partner, Move and Inspire Education. Uh, the Young Lawyers Association Division of the Delaware State Bar Association actually provides tutoring every single week to teens. You don't have to um, be a teen employee. Just as long as you're a teen member, you can receive that tutoring. Uh, then within our arts, we have a class <laughs> that our teens have, like. It's called Trap and Paint. So teens love hip-hop music, but it has to be very clean. We, they cannot have any cussing in their hip-hop music. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're able to um, do, trap and paint with that. Um, then with our, our career, we have something called Teens in Motion. So Teens in Motion is the hub workforce development program and employability skills training program for our teens. It teaches them, it goes over 90 days of leadership development training and soft skills, employability skills training before we place them with external employer partners. We hear a lot from employer partners that 
they can teach the hard skills of their particular industry, but teaching teens time management, financial literacy is not something that they have the capacity to do. So we do that over the course of 90 days. In addition to uh, restorative practices, social emotional intelligence, they also receive trauma informed care because a lot of our teams have been traumatized and have had a lot of, like you said, fractured families have experienced a lot of trauma. And then um, finally in our health pillar, so we have recreation, education, arts, career, and health, our health pillar, um, Christiana Care is one of our biggest um, partners and, and supporters with our health. So we offer reproductive health services okay. um, and classes to our teens. Um, of course, things around, um, you know, sex safe, uh, safe sex education classes, mm -hmm. and then healthy eating. We did a full healthy eating series out of our demo kitchen last summer, um, and it really taught our teens about healthy eating and healthy living. Well, that's awesome. You know, um, I, I'm just, how, how, do, how does one do, how much does it cost to be a part of this awesome team warehouse? Absolutely free, Dr. Curry. Absolutely All free. Absolutely free. We, said, nothing is free. <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely free to be a part of this. Yes. Well, how would one, if a grandmom is looking, if a grandfather is looking, how would one become a part of the team? Yes, it's actually fairly easy. There's a two-step process. So um, if you would like to become a member of the Teen Warehouse, you go to The Warehouse, so T-H-E, W A R H O U S E dot recdesk, R E C D E S K dot com. That is our membership database application. Okay. The first process is that you create a username and password that helps you set up a profile. Mm -hmm. And then after there, you'll see a link that says click on it for membership application. You complete the membership application. If you're a minor, your parent has to sign the ending waiver. And then you're a member. If you're 18 or 19, you can sign the waiver for yourself. And then you're a member. We get the alert once you complete the the entire two-step process and then from there we invite you in for orientation and a tour of the building well I, I think I want to go one step further yeah if a person is watching us today like Ezion Fair Baptist Church yes and they're saying how can we do you all receive donations yes we do absolutely <laughs> how, how do we donate yes yeah, so we, you can actually go to our regular website for that um there is a donation button on our regular website and that's www.teenwarehouse.org yeah i i was sitting here thinking you know as pastor of wilmington's most exciting church yes that i have to find a way and i'm going to come back to you but we're going to become one of y'all contributors because oh, awesome. as a church, Thank you. because a lot of my vision has always been to support the community. I, 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 I can't remember who quote it was. It's just slipping my mind right now who said it is better to uh, strengthen the youth than to have to repair the elderly. Wow, um, that's and, impactful. And, 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 and I, I have always, I'm not saying we're going to alienate the elder elderly, but <laughs> We must do something with you. Every young person is not wasted. Matter right. of fact, none of them are wasted. Right. Some, all too often, we have forgotten them. We right. have walked away from them. We forgot where we've come from. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'm, 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 I, this interview helped me more than it helped <laughs> whoever is looking at us today. <laughs> Thank because you. Because I personally, I'm going to make sure that every year. Ezai and Fair is going to be one of y'all donors. And oh, we're not gonna you. we're not gonna send you a hundred dollar gift. We're gonna send you a <laughs> nice gift so that you can you. say they are true partners in, in what we're doing. doing. Because over in Riverside, as well as over here in Southbridge, this is where it's needed. Yes. And we and we have to stop talking. Yes. You know, and I say to our church all the time, we, we it's all right to praise God and we're a very exciting ch church and uh, yes. it, that's good. But but service starts the moment the benediction hits. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I say on the air and I'm going to say it to you and you follow up because you're a Delta. You know, I, 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 I pay attention to the Deltas, uh, but I want to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do to be a part of it. We try to do some things over here in South Bridge, but what you're doing cannot fall apart. Right. And all too often it starts out strong and, and, and then it starts drifting because of the lack of funding. Yes, that is Let's true. Let's talk a little bit about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. how, how many were some of your fund, some of the people who fund you? Yes, so um, we have, um, the warehouse has uh, three um, arms of funding. So we had our capital campaign, which was all around our renovations. Um, for the most part, that has been completed. Then we have our operations and our programming. So um, some of our huge funders have been Christiana Care. They donated a million dollars to the facility, um, w of which about 800000 of that went directly into the warehouse. Um, and then the other component went into supporting Kingswood Community Center and Reach Riverside as a part of the work group. 
um, Welfare Foundation as well as the Longwood Foundation, Delmarva Power are huge supporters. Uh, we receive a lot of philanthropy and foundation. Uh, the McLaughlin Fund, we're actually um, going to be receiving a, a big donation from them. And um, so those are some of our bigger supporters. And then we receive donations from all different, you know, smaller sizes and uh, six figures and above on from different organizations. Uh, we, um, you know, any no, we always say no donation is too small because we offer all of these services for free to our teens. And then we also are um, employing our team. So division of social services with Department of Health and Social Services helps us employ our teens through a TANF subsidy. So we really are um, excited about that partnership because it allows us to employ a slew of teens, 62 right now, um, with different programs. We have two programs that are currently running. One is our information technology track and then the other is culinary arts. So if you are a teen who actually would like to get a job at the warehouse, we're going to launch our culinary arts program three more times this year and you can actually um, gain employment twelve dollars an hour um, and oh, you can wow. work for the warehouse That's yes almost more than I make <laughs> <laughs> twelve dollars an hour I'm gonna have to I'm, can I am I too old yeah um I'm sorry Dr. Curry oh. you can't but you can volunteer if you like <laughs> and we are looking for more teens from South Bridge like we oh, we good. would love to increase um, our our teen engagement with teens from South Bridge I was on a call last week um, with the South Bridge Neighborhood Action Council planning mm -hmm. yes. and really trying to get the word out about the warehouse because we're in such close proximity Riverside is to right the warehouse right. so our goal is to get more teens we will be receiving an electric bus um, probably this summer so the South Bridge will be a part of our loop to pick teens up get them to the warehouse and oh, bring wow. them back y'all do some amazing things. yes <laughs> yeah we're gonna come back in a minute and I want to what I want to do is I want to shift a little bit and I want to talk about Melanie and the family yes and then we'll <laughs> then we'll come back and we'll continue on because I'm just enjoying this you are a blessing. Thank you. Yeah, um, the, the, the organization is a blessing, blessing to the community, and we want to make sure they see what good, wholesome blessings look like. Thank we'll you. be right back. So my name is Logan Herring, I'm the CEO of Reach Riverside Kingswood Community Center and the warehouse. It gives me great pleasure to be here tonight and also have my two-year-old, LJ. Hi, buddy. So he's been exceptionally quiet. Hopefully he represents us as a unit today. <laughs> so how many people have heard of the book or read the book, very short tale, The Eagles Who Thought They Were Chickens? Show of hands. Is that no one? <laughs> Beautiful, it makes my job a lot easier. Because you can't tell if I messed up the story or not when I, when I tell you, give me my, my rendition. So the story, it's a very short fable. It's the eagles who thought they were chickens. And in a land far, far away, uh, there was a rich emperor who ruled the land and everybody revered this, this king. And on his perch, uh, he had an eagle that was equally loved by everyone in the kingdom. One day invaders came to the land and they took people, they took the eagle, put them on a ship, shipped them across the seas. During the course of that, uh, that journey, the eagle passed away, the bottom of the ship. But before doing so, the eagle laid three eggs. And the shipmate went to the captain and said, look, the eagle passed, but I have three eggs. What do you want me to do with these eggs? He said, put them in the coop with the chickens. So he puts them in the chicken coop. Get to America, they're in the chicken yard, and they hatch. And as soon as they hatch, they're being made, up, made fun of and ridiculed by all the chickens in the coop. And they're eagles, so they don't know any better. So they feel uh, demoralized, they feel bad about themselves, their appearance. Uh, they feel like they're ugly. They feel like they're not worth anything. So about a year later, uh, same invaders go back over to this land and take more people and another eagle, but this eagle makes it through the journey. And he is again put into the yard with the chickens. And the eagle sees the three chickens, two boys, one girl. And he says, my brothers, my sister, why are you sitting in the corner acting like you aren't what you are? And they like, what do you mean? Well, we're eagles, we're meant to soar the land. Now when the eagles got there, their wings were clipped. This eagle, when he got there, his, his wings were clipped said, we come from a land where we're loved and we fly all over 
and everybody loves us and, and we just tour the land and we're better than any ugly chicken. So the chickens didn't like that and there were roosters in the coop that ran the yard. So they began to peck at this eagle, beat him up to the point where he couldn't fly if he wanted to. So again, the other eagles, you know, they went off in their corner and they just tried to avoid any confrontation. So at one point, this eagle recovered. He got his strength back. His wings were ready, ready to blossom again. And he began to flap his wings and the eagles and the roosters started to laugh at him. But he flapped his wings and before you know it, he had lifted himself up above the chicken yard up onto the fence. And the other eagles were like, get down, get down, you're gonna get us in trouble. And he said, I told you, we're eagles, we're meant to soar. We're not dumb chickens. So he said, my brothers, my sisters, come join me, come join me. So the one brother, he flew and flew, he tried, he tried, he flapped his wings, he flapped his wings, and he went up and he went down, and he went up and he went down. Then the sister, she did the same thing, went up and went down, and the other brother went up and went down, but they kept trying. Eventually, the boy and the girl ended up joining him on the fence. But the one boy that was left, they looked down and said, come on, my brother, join us. He said, I can't join you. He said, I'm just a dumb chicken and I'm not meant to fly. The point of that story is that too often, the people in the communities where I work in Riverside are often told that they're chickens when they're eagles. And they have so many barriers and so many people around them that tell them they can't do it, that they never think that they can do it. So in your life, I think that most people in this room, and I'm not going to make any assumptions, but I'm going to say if you're here tonight, you probably had eagles in your lifetime. That when you felt down about yourself or felt like you couldn't do anything, those eagles stepped up into your life and said, no, you can do it. You can fly. And that's what we have to do for the people in our communities, especially those that don't have eagles. They don't have examples to show them that they can fly. These are eagles. These are my eagles at Kingswood Community Center. The most low-income neighborhood in the city of Wilmington, where 70% of our children live in poverty. But when I look at these children and these bright-eyed individuals who, just this past year, 78% of our children that graduated our pre-K are kindergarten ready, I see eagles. That's what I see. So we take approach to, whole, to community revitalization, where it's high quality mixed income housing, a cradle to college education pipeline, and community health and wellness. Now, I'll probably be the anomaly in the room, as I usually am, and I don't mind pushing against the green, but I know I'm here to talk about early childhood education, which I think is critical, and I think the people before me already made that case, so I don't have to do so. But I also think that when we are singularly focused and looking at early education and we forget that this is a pipeline, we forget about the mothers that give birth to those children and how we need to support them. We forget about when those children grow up and they become teenagers and then we drop the ball and we're not those eagles for them. And then we think about when they're young adults and not providing them with the guidance and access to college and career. We're dropping the ball. So we can't look at this just from an early education lens or, or perspective. We have to look holistically at how we provide a support system to make sure that the eagles in our communities actually take flight. So when we talk about Reach Riverside, we talk about the holistic model of redevelopment, education, and community health. You can't, take, you can't take advantage of the community assets if you're afraid to leave your home. You have to be a part of a healthy community where you can get out and walk and you can take advantage of the resources and the assets in the community. We can't talk about a holistic revitalization without addressing education from the cradle to the college and career. And then we talk about the housing stock. We have a neighborhood where everyone in the neighborhood was predestined to grow up there where they were put there on purpose, where in, I believe, the 1970s, when there were federal laws that were passed and policies that made sure people looked like me 
didn't end up in neighborhoods where we're sitting today. And what people don't understand, or a lot of people don't know, that Riverside was actually full of white people after the war. Yeah, that's right, LJ, they were. <laughs> and there are two major housing projects in Wilmington, Southbridge and Riverside. Southbridge was for the black veterans coming back from war. Riverside was for the white veterans coming back from war. And when whites had the ability to purchase homes in neighborhoods like this and blacks didn't, they then consumed that neighborhood of Riverside. And they've been stuck in that cycle of concentrated poverty ever since. So when we look at the children, when we look at the mothers, we look at their older siblings, we look at the young adults, they've never been told that they were eagles. They've always seen themselves as chickens. I look at my own life, and my mom is here to support me as she always has been. I had three major eagles in my life. My grandfather, who was one of the biggest philanthropic leaders that there ever was in the city of Wilmington, Reverend Otis Heron. He was a blind reverend. He grew up in North Carolina, and when he was a teenager, he was caught in a flood. And he swam home, got bacteria in his eyes, and eventually became blind. Moved to Wilmington, Delaware, started a church, Union Baptist Church, and began to do the things that I'd like to think that I'm somewhat doing today where he made affordable housing available for low-income families, where he opened senior housing. He opened a daycare center that's named after my grandmother, Mary E. Heron. And when there was a civil rights movement and Jesse Jackson came to town, he stayed at my grandfather's house. Then where was my brother? My brother's 13 years older than me. He graduated from St. Mark's, he graduated from LaSalle. He started three IT companies and sold them. He does very well for himself. And I had him as an example. He paid for me to go to private high school. My grandfather paid for me to go to Wilmington Montessori, where my son is currently today at the age of two. And then I had my mom, who has been there since before I was born, to get back to my original point. We think about our moms. We think about our parents. That's early education, before it even happens. And my mom is here today, and she's holding my son. That's a cycle that never ends. But some people don't even get to make it to that cycle. So I think about the eagles in my life. I think about my mom, I think about my brother, I think about my grandfather. And now I have a new eagle who will never ever think that he's not an eagle. So I don't know how many two-year-olds you know that can sit here for an hour <laughs> with, without an electronic device because we don't have service here. So trust me, I had the headphones ready and, and I had a backup plan. So now, luckily my mom stopped at the store, divine intervention, she got some dollar dinosaurs and that's what he's playing with right now. His imagination is going wild. So we are now putting together what we like to call our cradle to college and career pipeline. And when we talk about making sure eagles know that they're eagles, and we talk about this pipeline, I would say most of the folks in this room had their own pipeline that was in their community, in their homes. But well, we don't, so we have to manufacture it. And we talk about a pipeline all the time, you know, early learning, then elementary, middle school, high school, college and career. But what is the insulation around that pipeline? So we're calling our insulation project. What are those services, soft skills development, tutoring, recreational, ath ath athletics, family engagement, mental health, work experience, job skills training, after school activities, case management, advocacy, jobs, housing, safety, collaboration with governmental agencies, the list goes on. And then we get more specific. Who are those agencies we're working with to deliver those services? So when those eagles realize they're eagles and they're ready to fly, they got some wind beneath their wings. So last but not least, it takes a village. And that, that's what I'm trying to say up here, is that it takes a village to raise eagles these days, especially in low-income communities where you have moms and dads that might be working two or three jobs just to make ends meet. And if you're lucky to have a two-parent household, they're probably on opposite shifts. And then how many overlaps do they have where they actually sit down as a family? Or are they at Kingswood where we have them until 9 o'clock and we're trying to provide meals and support for them? It takes a village. So when we think about early education, we think about, we think about Kingswood Community Center and our early learning center there. And then we realize that once they get paid past age 12 and 
they don't have purchase to care and the other fund funding models that are part of this uh, this model in our state where we support our 12 and unders and then we literally throw them out into the cold when they're 13 and say good luck we had to start something where we give attention to the where to our teens and that's the warehouse we're now putting three million dollars of renovations to the formerly prestige academy building and we will open in january we have 130 partners that we'll work with to make sure teens have a place to go and then reach riverside is just kind of serving as that umbrella organization that makes sure the river that the uh the resources are available that the execution is done with fidelity to make sure that again and i'm gonna keep hitting home with this that when our eagles hatch from those eggs that they never believe that they're chickens and when they become teens and when they become young adults, by that time they're soaring. And we're all looking up and say, you go Eagles, even though I'm a Cowboys fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's my time and I thank you for your attention and I thank you for having me. And we're back. Well, we had an opportunity thus far to really talk to us, Phillips, about so much. And she has brought a lot of energy to the show today. And, and listen, this is some wonderful stuff that she's sharing with us. And I want you to take a moment for those of you who know people who can donate, for those of you who can write a check, go ahead, write the check to them because we want to keep this rolling. We want them to duplicate this type of service other places. Right now it's in Riverside. It's all right to come over to South Bridge. It's all right to go to other parts of the city. Wherever we can help young people is what matters. But all too often, Sister Melanie, that um, our families tend to suffer a little bit, <laughs> because our personal families, because we get so engaged. I'm not saying you're neglecting, but we, we get so engaged with making sure we help our community that sometimes they feel a little, that you're not getting out, a little left out. <laughs> Let's talk about family a little bit. Yes, so I am I am married. I've been married for about seven years and I have two daughters. Um, I have a huge gap. One is 19 and one is five. Oh, um, wow. So can you imagine me trying to run a teen center and kindergarten on Zoom at the same time? Um, I have been losing that battle. So thank God I have a great line sister that my youngest daughter goes to her house every day and her, um, my daughter and her son are in virtual school together. So that works out really, really well. Um, but yes, uh, my husband is my biggest cheerleader. Um, um, he says all the time, I know I married a boss <laughs> and I know I married a director of operations of the warehouse. And so I know, but can you please come home sometimes? <laughs> and so, um, uh, my goal every day now is to get home at least by eight o'clock because when the warehouse kind of first came, I wasn't getting home until 10, 11. And so I'm doing better this year. I'm getting 2021. 20, I've been yeah, about home about eight or eight 30 ish. Um, and what I try to do is be very diligent and very purposeful with spending time with them. So when it comes to the weekends, my husband has off on the weekends. I'm off. Of course, the girls are off. So that family time is important for us. So my our, my youngest is a, a mama's girl. Like she is, she loves her mother. It's that that's all it's going to be forever and ever. So I try to make sure that I do activities just with her. And then my 19 year old um, is really more close to my husband than she is to me. So they do their daddy daughter dates and things like that. So um, I really try to make sure that it's really purposeful. We do our family vacations, and then um, me and my husband we try to have um, about two or three date nights a month. So it's just me and him. That's good. Yeah. I was going to ask that yes. question. Is there any date nights? Yes. Because you got to make sure you keep those rolling. Yes. That's good. So so what do you what do you see um how, how's your, your 19 year old how's she doing? She's doing good. She um actually works for Division of Health and Social Services. Good. Yes. Um she really really wants to work with um children long term. So she's kind of in this phase of okay, I'm working, I'm trying to figure out which direction I want to go. So I'm letting her do that because I think sometimes we say to our teens 18 19, oh, you're not in school or what are you doing? You got to figure it out right now. And I don't think that's necessarily the yeah. case. I think that um, while college may have been my route, that may not necessarily Absolutely. be hers. Mm -hmm. So as, okay, you're working, you're doing something productive. Um, my daughter's a homebody, so outside of work, she's in the house. In fact, when COVID hit Dr. Curry, she said, oh, great, people can stay in the house. This is great. So uh, well, more people should stay in the house. So um, I really think it's, you know, with her and other teens, allow them time. Their 19s, their early 20s, allow them to explore. If they're not doing anything, you know, criminal or anything, you continue to mentor 
mentor them, but you really want to make sure that you give them that opportunity to explore, find out who they are and what they want to do. Don't put your vision of who you are on them or try to live vicariously through, through them it. because of things you didn't have an opportunity to do that you wanted to do as a teenager. Allow them to, you know, lead and then you kind of guide them when they need the resources. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we're going to take one last break. And what I want to come back is one, I want to talk about one, one, one um, um, bad experience maybe you've had thus far with working with the young people. Okay. And one thrilling one. Okay. And also, where did this concept come from? Gotcha. We'll be right back.
And we're back. Well, for those of you who've been watching, you know, uh, Sister Melanie have really given us a whole lot, as I would say, a plethora of energy and excitement. And, and the, the, the folks over in Riverside should be de delighted that she's there, as well as the whole team and the crew that's going, that's happening over there at the teen warehouse. Well, I just want to, you know, before we go, you know, was there a challenging moment that you probably could share uh, during this this whole time that you were with the team? Yes, yeah, so um, of course COVID has had its general challenges, but um, I would say um, because we do everything, everything uh, we do is for teens by teens. So really we go to them with um, four questions and answers. Hey, what do you guys want to see in this area? What do you want this pillar to look like? So we have had, um, we've had some challenges there because I think sometimes some of our teens were like, oh, you really, like, you really want me to answer that? You, right. You're the adult, like figure it out. Right. And when we kind of have had conversations and gets them to sit down and really see like, this is your program, this is your building, we are just simply here to guide so I would say one of the probably biggest challenges um, that I've seen at the warehouse was getting our teens to be vulnerable with accepting the mm -hmm. fact that they are the leaders um, and we had to really sit them down and say no the responsibility is not on us to figure out which programs are in here as adults call us and say oh I would like to do this for the warehouse and this for the warehouse so we had to have a big meeting this is truly yours this is truly everything that you want to see and I think it was a challenge because teens have never been asked to do that before right. they've never been oh you actually want my opinion my voice matters for right like, for real yeah. so seeing that but now we have a great ebb and flow and it has really worked out well in fact sometimes when I schedule something they'll team my teen executive committee will say I'm Miss Melody that we our schedules book you didn't you didn't ask us to put that on <laughs> I'm like oh I'm sorry excuse me <laughs> so it has come kind of come full circle you've already given us a couple of your thrills uh, especially the young man who, who yes. has applied to um, Harvard uh, but are there any others you would like to share with us? Yes, I would say um, we have a young uh, man. Um, his name is BJ Eileen. He is absolutely phenomenal. BJ is 14 years old. Um, he attends Salesianum, Salesianum Academy, um, and he uh, maintains a 3.9 GPA. The reason I really point BJ out is because BJ volunteers probably anywhere between 15 to 20 hours a week at the warehouse, mm -hmm. and he does not work there. He does not get paid to do anything at the warehouse and he is a very hard worker. Um, he's also on their, the football team at his school. And so it's just so impactful to see that he gives of himself freely, his time and dedication at 14 years old, that many service hours per week, and is not expecting anything in return. Um, he cleans up around the building, he cleans up outside. He's at every single event that we have for the warehouse. And just to know that this young man is like, oh yeah, I just wanna be here and do anything I can do to help. He will come to me, he will go to other staff members, do you guys need anything? And I just think that that's so impactful because I want other teens to see even our teen employees like, hey, this young man is not getting paid at all, but he comes here every single day to do anything he can do to help. Excellent. And you know, what I really liked is that the two wonderful experiences that you shared were males. Yes. Young males. And, and, and we live in a, a day where uh, a lot of people think that the males have just been wasted. They're lost. Mm. But they're looking for a place. If you yes. say he, the young man, is, he comes, he volunteers, he's also on the football team. We still have good people. Yes. African-American history is still alive. Yes. And I'm very glad to have you. Where did this concept come <laughs> from? I heard your excitement. I feel your excitement. Where did this?
this come from? So this is the brainchild of Logan Herring. Um, Logan had this great concept to say, hey, what would it look like to have a community center run by teenagers or, you know, really with a lot of their um, input into um, a full center? And so he had this idea and how the concept turned into the warehouse is that he pitched this idea to the Pete DuPont Freedom Foundation. Okay. So whoever pitched, they, they had a lot of different people pitch their ideas. Whoever won, um, Pete DuPont Freedom Foundation would um, uh, basically fund the startup and the warehouse won. Oh, wow. And that was in 2018. And so from there, as a result of them um, winning, Logan winning that, you know, um, the pitch idea, uh, the Pete DuPont Freedom Foundation began the funding. Other funders came along after that, and now we have the warehouse. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Just one thought can yes. change into this whole great thing. Yes. It's been a joy having you with me today. Thank you, Dr. It's been a pleasure. And I'm just excited. I'm proud. I know every Delta that's looking to saying that is my <laughs> sore world. We have a lot of them here in this church as well. Um, and even to, 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 to um, what you do for your family, we want to say thank you for your sacrifice, oh, for what you, you do. Is there anything else you would like to share? Um, one more time, just make sure we know your website and anything else you would like to share, just share that with us. Sure, yep. So our warehouse is um, www.teenwarehouse.org. Our membership application site is thewarehouse.recdesk, R-E-C-D-E-S-K.com. Um, um, again, I'm Melody Phillips, the Director of Operations. I would just like to honestly thank my team. I work with a phenomenal team um, from the Ansa Kelly as our Program Impact Specialist, Sierra Harris is our Program Manager, and my right and left hand, Brian Aline and uh, Jenny Vizi. I cannot do any of this without them, as well as Brandon Wallace, our Safety Ambassador. So I thank them wholeheartedly because I sometimes get to be the face and the voice, but they are truly on the ground making an impact with our teens. Well, that's just a blessing, and thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I can't say it enough. You're living up to your, your pledge. Thank you. <laughs> You're yes. taking care of your community, <laughs> and if there's anything Easy Iron Fair can do to support you, this is not a one-time. This show is always going to be available to you, so if you want to get the word out through our social medias as well as through our Channel 28 that we are on, I think, well, we're on there a lot, but I want to make sure that you know you have a vehicle to do that. We also want to interview your, um, uh, Lou, his name is... Uh, uh, the, the other, oh, Logan, Logan, Logan Herring. We want yep. to interview him too, only because this is a great, that, that, it was great. This was a great Thank concept, you. but you brought enough to take get some money out of it. <laughs> and he can just Thank talk you. the other side of it. Yes. But I thank you so very much. Thank we, you. We'll be right back. Well, we've had a great show. I'm still bubbled up and I'm grateful to God that Sister Melody Phillips came and she shared the various things that they are doing on the, uh, at the Teen Warehouse. It's just been a joy. I want you to make sure you support this endeavor. For those of you who are watching us, those of you who, who know someone who can donate, Go ahead and send a donation over there and let's keep this rolling because before you know it, we'll have that facility in Riverside. Then we can have one over here in South Bridge. We can have one in East Side. We can have one all around the city and our young people will have an out. They will have an outlet. So it was a joy and a privilege to have her with us today. And she brought energy. And this is not something she just did for this show. But everyone who knows her know she puts her whole heart in it. So I thank you so very much to her. Thanks go out to her. And I thank all of you who've been watching us. Don't forget, follow us on all of our social medias because listen, the more you see, the more you like, I want you to push that like so that we can continue to grow and flow and bring you that quality broadcasting. It's been a great time with you today. I pray that the Lord blessed you tremendously. Until the next time, God bless. <music>